Hi friends, we are starting a face to face offline batch in Bangalore with SS Academy. That is for CA final financial reporting paper number one. I yeah, will be taking exactly two months from 1st November to 31st December. We will complete it. It is starting from 1st November 2022. Yes, and in Jayanagara branch of SS Academy, we have morning batch and evening batch will be at Seshadripuram SS Academy. Right. And if the student is missing because of any reasons, right, they are going to get a backup class. All right, we'll ensure that their things, I mean, they will study and complete. And from the face to face batch, you know the benefits out of it. We'll be completing the syllabus in time. You don't need to postpone and you don't need to compromise for your goals. See you in the class. Please share this information with your friends. That will help me and as well. Thank you. Next, for my books, that is an Indies Made Easy, our financial reporting Made Easy, and Fast Track Summary book. Yes, you can uh, order in ravikanthmiriala.com or you can contact the given number for the books. Right. For, your, for your doubts, clarification, please join the Telegram group, Indies Discussion Group, RKM. These charts are from Quick Revision Fast Track book on financial reporting of mine, which is available in my website ravikanthmiriala.com and it is available in the market as well. Let's look at index 36 impairment of assets. Yeah, when see this is impairment of assets, it is only for assets, not for liabilities, obviously, it doesn't make any sense, right. And this standard is obviously not applicable for inventory because it's already measured at cost RNR, whichever is lower, deferred tax asset. And the plan assets are measured at fair market value. Financial assets impairment is dealt by in the SO109 specifically. That's why it is not dealt by the standard. Biological assets are just, I mean, it's measured at fair market value minus selling cost. So there's no point in it. Insurance assets, ignore it because it's not in your syllabus. And assets held for sale. Assets are held for sale always measured at book value or fair market value minus selling cost whichever is lower. So in most of the circumstances it is already measured at fair market value or NRV or fair market value minus selling cost. That's why it is not applicable. In case of financial assets, remember financial assets impairment is dealt by in dealt by that in one 109 specifically. When do you say there is an impairment? When you say your book value is greater than the recoverable amount, then I say there is an impairment. Yeah. What do you mean by recoverable amount? Recoverable amount is fair market value minus selling cost or, or the value in use or the value in use whichever is higher or value in use whichever is higher. Fair market value minus selling cost or value in use whichever is higher is called recoverable, recoverable amount. Yeah. And what is value in use? Value in use is nothing but present value of the future cash flows. By using the asset and even from selling the asset over its life, how much cash flows, future cash flows will come, that you have to turn into present value. That is what value in use. There are so many other points which obviously will be part of the discussion. Next, fair market value minus selling cost. Fair market value, I mean you are supposed to refer that is uh, exit price. If you want to sell the asset, what is the amount you will get it, which is discussed and defined by India S113. When it comes to selling cost, selling costs are incremental cost. If what are the cost I am going to incur because I am selling? If I had not sold, I would have not incurred. Those costs only you are supposed to consider. Right. And when I say carrying amount, carrying amount is not the original cost. That is cost minus accumulated depreciation minus accumulated impairment loss. Accumulated impairment loss after deduction of these three things, what comes is equal to carrying amount. Right. Is I mean, I, I told you if the recoverable amount is less than the carrying amount, there is an impairment loss. What is the amount of loss? Loss amount is book value minus recoverable amount. That is impairment loss. Then how do you account for? Now, first, do you have any revaluation reserve with respect to that specific asset in the balance sheet? If you say no, sir, then this impairment loss will be hitting the profit and loss. Impairment loss, bracket P&L account, debit to accumulated impairment loss. 
if you say no i have accumulate i am following revaluation model with respect to the specific asset okay and there is a revaluation reserve existing then revaluation reserve account debit to the extent it is available and if the impairment loss is over and above that then the difference amount will be debited to profit and loss will be debited to profit and loss right and if suppose yes your impairment total impairment loss obviously cannot be greater than the carrying amount correct now after accumulated impairment loss the carrying amount should maximum it can become zero no no there is an obligation there is an obligation i mean uh, suppose there is a ban on the asset that means you are only i mean the company only has to destroy it company only has to destroy it under those circumstances i mean you have to check with index 37 is there a provision requirement correct now the asset value has to become zero and wherein you have an obligation to destroy with respect to that if you have a present obligation arising from the past events wherein probable future economic benefits outflow and where you can measure it reliably that means if you satisfy the three conditions of india's 37 provision then you are supposed to make a provision as per india's 37 right remember these three things always one first thing you are supposed to depreciate it then if you are following revaluation model revalue the asset as per the respective i mean it may be in days 30 in days 16 or in days 38 then you revalue it right afterwards only impairment is supposed to be tested so first depreciation sequence is depreciation revaluation then impairment that means if there is an impairment loss to the asset in the current year the effect on the depreciation will not be in the current year effect on the depreciation will be in the next year onwards next year onwards but not on the current year that you need to remember and deferred taxation obviously will be applicable because book value is coming down which will not be considered by income tax department correct now the tax base tax base will remain same but the carrying amount is going to be down there will be deferred tax that you need to consider next if you are following revaluation model sir will there be any impairment effect yes revaluation model may fair market value only will be considered not fair market value minus selling cost so now the discussion is based on the selling cost significance if the selling cost are significant significant then you have to calculate fair market value minus selling cost and value in use obviously then you have to check whether there is an impairment loss no no sir selling cost are hardly anything then there is no impairment then just go ahead revaluation you have done it sufficient you don't need to follow this standard right do you need to test every year impairment right not necessarily right only when there is an indicator that may be external indicator or internal indicator only when there is an indicator that time you are supposed to supposed to do this impairment procedure if there is no indicator nothing is supposed to be done that you can run through next there are exceptions to the sabo rule as i said impairment test should be done only when there is an indicator but under the following circumstance you have to do the impairment test every year whether or not you find an indicator these are the only three circumstances one is intangible asset under development one is next one is intangible asset which has indefinite life and the goodwill which is arising from the business combination goodwill arising from the business combination these three circumstances whether you have indicator or do not have indicator it has to be tested for impairment every year every year does not mean on the balance sheet date it can be done any one day right and but you maintain the consistency that is what important right uh, some points with respect to value in use right you i mean uh, the management should consider i mean reasonable and supportable assumptions you are supposed to consider as i told you it is present value of the future cash flows that's why i mean you have to consider your budgets forecast correct i mean try to use more of external data compared to internal data with respect to growth rate it's better to consider long term weighted average growth rate instead of list i mean uh, recent past one two three years i am growing by 30 percent so i am expecting next 10 years i will grow by 30 percent is illogical next in your future cash flows you have to consider only operating cash flows my dear you should not consider financing cash flows you should not consider investing also but subject to a small point right and the tax payment tax receipts no i have not told maybe yes you are supposed to consider only pre-tax cash flows 
we have to take pre-tax cash flows and you have to take the pre-tax discounting rate only right and if there is a restructure plan which is if it is committed and the balance sheet date by the management and there is an evidence that these people have started doing the job then yes you should consider the future cash flows of the restructured asset and to construct a to, to i mean you have to consider the restructuring expenditure also you are supposed to consider right if if the if your cash flows are in foreign currency the foreign currency rate foreign currency rate i mean uh, uh, foreign currency rate on the date of valuation on the date of balance sheet date i mean that is obviously balance sheet date you are supposed to consider okay i mean you are not supposed to imagine you are not supposed to imagine what would be the foreign currency rate at a future date no right let us come to uh, let us come to discounting discounting if you discuss the discounting rate that you have suppo you are supposed to apply the pre tax rate but the pre tax rate should reflect the time value of money and risk specific to the asset risk specific to the asset i mean to say the rate of return that is irr from that specific business you are supposed to consider irr from the specific business you are supposed to consider and that's what you have to take the market opportunity rate you can consider so initially it is very difficult to to do so then yes you can start with by taking the wacc that is weighted average cost of capital under that calculation i mean obviously that is uh, weighted average of ke kd kp i mean whatever you have which you have learned in ca um, inter financial management that ke has to be measured using capm model right rf plus beta into rm minus rf that formula and if you that is also not available then you have to take the incremental borrowing rate that is also not available then you can take other market borrowing rate but when you are taking other market borrowing rate say example you have two business one is gold business one is textile business you cannot follow same discounting rate for both suppose if you feel gold is more risky then and my borrowing rate has come 10 percentage then for gold you have to follow 10 plus some two percent is three percent is according to the risk i mean to say you have to consider the risk factor so far whatever we have discussed is with respect to individual asset now let us get into cgu okay that is cash generating unit what is cash generating unit unit that is the smallest identifiable group of assets smallest identifiable groups group of assets that generate largely independent cash flows from other assets smallest group smallest identifiable group of assets that generate largely independent cash flows from other assets you have to prove that this is i mean you should start with a small number of group of assets and st start adding 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 at which level you are able to generate independent cash flows without considering any other business then that is going to be considered as cgu okay right so one company may be having one cgu or more than one cgu that is possible and that is a decision making okay if there is an impairment loss with respect to with respect to cgu right see impairment loss calculation remains the same and how do you account for the impairment loss right is the loss due to right first you have to check is the loss due to only one or few specific assets of the cgu if you say yes then that loss should be attributable and should be reduced from the specific asset don't allocate it to the all the other assets if you say no 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 sir it is not with respect to one or few assets it is with respect to entire cgu then yes then you are supposed to allocate the impairment loss you have to allocate the impairment loss to all the assets of the cgu in the ratio of their carrying amount in the ratio of their carrying amount you are supposed to allocate it okay but after allocation remember the carrying amount of the individual assets cannot be cannot be um, i mean less than it cannot be less than the fair market value minus selling cannot be less than the following okay remember fair market value minus selling cost or value in use or zero whichever is higher it cannot be less than whichever is higher of these three numbers yeah you have to work on it if you know it it's fine otherwise you please practice that specific question which is given in my textbook that is in days made easy 
right now 9th edition is going on which you are aware of it impairment loss should be allocated to all other assets that's normal thing right let's get into the important and uh, very crucial topic that is goodwill yeah goodwill obviously you know which must be arising from the business combination yeah here the question should come whether the goodwill is allocated to specific cgus or it is not allocated sir but it is related to sir yeah if you say let's go to the first situation it is allocated to specific cgu remember if if the goodwill is allocated to specific cgu that cgu has to be tested for impairment every year okay right if the goodwill is there sir but that goodwill is not specifically allocated to any of the cgu sir but is related to few cgu sir then those cgus need not be tested for impairment every year that means you have to test for impairment only when there is only when there is an indication otherwise it is not necessary to do so right next right in right let's go to the first one when it is allocated when it is allocated means cgu assets value plus goodwill then this total value has to be compared with the recoverable amount if there is any impairment loss first you have to hit the goodwill and afterwards if there is any correct now after 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 goodwill elimination if there is any loss impairment loss further left that has to be allocated to the parts uh, i mean each asset of the cgu in the ratio of their carrying amount subject to above discussion that means after location after location of the impairment loss the book value of the asset cannot be lower than fair market value minus selling cost value in use or zero whichever is higher okay right next if it is i mean if the goodwill is not allocated but it is related under that circumstance what are we supposed to do right you have to i told you you have to check for the impairment only when there is an indication that means say example the goodwill has been the goodwill is related to a b c right i found indication in b if i say right then you first you are supposed to test for impairment of in, impairment of which one cgu b right if there is any loss that loss has to be allocated to the cgu b's assets only cgu b's assets only right not to, to the goodwill right that is first round of checking of impairment loss once that round is over then you have to club a plus b plus c plus goodwill then you have to go for second round of impairment checking right and now if there is any impairment loss now you have to hit first goodwill then after the goodwill hitting still if there is an impairment loss then that impairment loss will be allocated to a and c because b is already you brought into firm i mean recoverable amount there will be nothing else to be done with so a and c you are supposed to do it right and if this uh, right let's go to the next small topic that is corporate assets the corporate assets are nothing but car corporate assets cannot be treated as a cgu right these are all like ho assets these are information system maybe research center such things this corporate assets cannot amount to cgu that's why what are we supposed to do first you have to ask a question yourself can it be allocated to it can it be reasonably allocable to any cgu if you say yes it can be allocable to any cgu right it is also one more physical asset right then you add it to the assets and you just perform your impairment loss whenever there is an impairment indicator that's normal okay right if you say no sir i cannot allocate it specifically then yes you have to check i mean to the smallest possible cgu suppose um says i have cgu 1 2 3 4 are there you can't allocate you can't allocate this information system to a b c d i mean 1 2 3 4 right then you should check can i allocate it to one possible or not possible then you should see one plus two is it possible to allocate no sir not possible sir one plus two plus three let me check can i can i add can i allocate this information system to one plus two plus three possible means allocated there itself right and no not possible sir then it is attributable to the entire company as a whole right under that circumstance right allocated to allocated to the entire this uh, entire company if there is any impairment loss and if there is any goodwill to the entire company then al uh, first allocate i mean first you have to hit goodwill first afterwards corporate assets and the other assets of the cgus 
right that is the one and the next topic is with respect to reversal of impairment loss right can we reverse it yes yes you can reverse it but this reversal yeah for this reversal also if you find i mean what is that when can you reverse the impairment loss only when you find an evidence that the company's i mean earning capacity has gone up remember the company's earning capacity that is service potentiality has gone up okay under that circumstance whatever the impairment loss you booked in the past that can be reversed for this also external indicator internal indicators you can consider it right if it is with respect to reversal of impairment loss with respect to individual asset reversal of impairment loss with respect to individual asset was it revalued earlier if you say yes right uh, yes first credit to the profit and loss to the extent earlier debited to the p and l correct now because of impairment loss if you remember i told you initially when you had the impairment loss revaluation reserve account debit to the extent available then balancing figure will be hitting the p and l now in the reversal reversal angle you have to go first first you should not go to revaluation reserve first you should credit the p and l to the extent earlier debited then balance amount is supposed to be created to revaluation reserve right if you say no sir it was never revalued no problem then the amount i mean there is no revaluation reserve means obviously it will be created to p and l but remember remember when you wanted to do the revaluation correct na? i mean uh, sorry reversal of impairment reversal of impairment loss uh, i mean what should be the amount uh, what should be the amount you should be the recoverable amount or the carrying amount um, i mean after reversal after after reversal your carrying amount should be either the recoverable amount or the carrying or the carrying amount if the asset was never impaired whichever is lower it has to be right next reversal of goodwill is fully prohibited no because if you reverse the goodwill it will be assumed you are creating a self generated goodwill which is obviously prohibited that's it my dear if you like this video please share it with your friends like comment and subscribe to the channel and let this be useful to as many as students as possible and thank you very much wish you the very best